Okay, so I get a testing since I'm first. So testing, can everybody hear me? Okay. So my job is to talk about food, especially as it relates to health. And with that, sometimes I get tired of talking about it. No one wants to be told what to eat or what not to eat, myself included, and I study the subject. But the truth is, food has turned into this complicated, tricky, dysfunctional thing that's hurting a lot of people, and we need to have more conversations around it. So I want to be clear that whenever I use the term we, this is not meant to assume anything about you or your food habits. This is just a blanket reference point used to describe our culture in general. So moving onward. Food is the basis for everything. It builds our blood and forms the structure of our cells. Yet many people don't truly know what they're eating. Each year we're bombarded by all of these new health claims such as vegan, paleo, raw, juicy, and go gluten free. All of them claiming to be the way to perfect health. But we're not getting any healthier and it's because we're not focusing on sustainable solutions that work. In the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you how food journaling revolutionized the way I eat, think, and talk about food, and therefore revolutionized my taste in everything. And it wasn't by counting calories or going on a diet or eliminating major macronutrients, but by forming a connection between my body and my food choices in a way that allowed me to completely change my life. So let me tell you how. Um, I was vaguely unwell for most of my childhood. I was that kid that went to the nurse's office quite a bit, and this continued to some degree well into high school. In college, I went to the doctor and he reeled off something about serotonin levels and then handed me a prescription for ADD medication. This was his solution to me needing to wake up and, and focus. Have some amphetamines. <laughs> I went to the, uh, to the nutritionist because being on prescribed speed, I wasn't eating anything and I really wanted to figure out how to eat better. But she told me to count calories, basically. So, but it wasn't until 2011, after moving to South Korea for a job teaching English, that I was hit with an exhaustion and pain so severe that it became quickly unmanageable. Uh, if Google didn't beat you to it, you could have convinced me that I had rheumatoid arthritis along with some other rare incurable condition that caused people to gain upwards of 20 pounds in one month and develop a skin rash so severe that it caused your little students who barely spoke a word of English to ask, teacher, what's wrong with your face? In perfect English. <laughs> Once I woke up on a cold, sterile stainless steel table in the side room of a hospital located next to my school. I had an IV in my arm and a nurse next to me typing furiously into uh, her iPhone to tell me through Google Translate that I had passed out, I needed to eat better, and she liked my tights. <laughs> so eating better at this point still meant counting calories, so I grudgingly went back to it. And I say grudgingly because it sucked. Uh, but time went on and I still felt like shit and I wasn't getting any better. My students were still asking me what was wrong with my face. Uh, so I decided to take another approach. I stopped counting calories and started focusing instead on what was actually in my food. And I don't mean like today I actually ate a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but what's actually in the peanut butter and how about the jelly? If an amino acid in turkey has the ability to make us tired, what is TBHQ and what does that do? What are all of these man-made chemicals and additives doing to our bodies and our minds? So with that finding came even more discoveries. I found that whenever I didn't eat soy, my hands didn't get huge and hot and painful. And when I didn't eat grape nuts, I didn't look six months pregnant. And when I ate more vegetables, the skin rash that now was not only on my face but also on my legs started to subside. So food journaling allowed me to see that certain foods were robbing my body and therefore my life of energy and health, and it gave me a path to healing that really no one else was able to show me. So what does this mean for you? You may not be a total food freak show like I am, but maybe you're just overly tired, or maybe you're really bloated after eating, or really gassy, and it's uncomfortable and embarrassing. If food is complicated for you, here's what I suggest. First and foremost, if you're counting calories or using a number on a scale to paint a picture of health, stop this, effective immediately. Second, check in with your body and notice what it's up to, especially around mealtime. Track any physical and mental symptoms uh, before and after a meal and hone in on whether or not the food you're eating is affecting your body and therefore your life for better or worse. And if you're not convinced, I, try, I challenge you to try this for just two weeks. The act of waking up to what's actually in your food and how your body responds is a very telling practice. And if anything, a really cool way to become more present in your life in general. I truly believe that everyone has something to discover no matter how big or how small. 
And the beauty of those discoveries is that you can begin to bring forth this very vibrant version of yourself and possibly discover tastes that you never knew that you had. So, thank you. <laughs>